it's Willie here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're reviewing the all-new 2025 Honda HRV Sport. And a big thanks to Joe and Alex at Ocean Honda in Port Ritchie, Florida, for help make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below, and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Port Ritchie, Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And as for Joe or Alex. And for those of you guys who don't know, the HRV has been Honda's subcompact crossover SUV since 1999. The third generation HRV that you see here is released in 2023, due for a facelift for 2026, but mostly unchanged for 2025. There are three trims available for the 2025 HRV, ranging from the $25,000 base LX up to the $29,000 top of the line EXL. Here we have the Sport sitting right in the middle of the pack with a $27,000 base price. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So, First thing you notice, with this red paint color, it is aggressive. The Sport gives us all black contrast, no shiny chrome anywhere on this SUV except for the Honda badge right up front. Beneath that, we get the black grille, radiator behind it for this two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, more black contrast in the corner. It appears to be functional airflow leading directly to the brakes, black headlight housing, LED daytime running light, and full LED headlamps. And again, aggressive red paint color. The wheel and tire setup with the Sport, we get the black contrasted 18 inch rims wrapped in Hankook Kinergy GT all season tires. The dimensions are 225-55 R18 with black lug nuts as well. Multi-piston front brake caliper, single piston out rear, which we'll check out in one second. We get a little bit of plastic cladding for the wheel wells and rocker panel side skirt area. Black contrasted mirrors, LED turn signal on them, blind spot monitoring on the glass we get all black trim for the window trim black pillars no sunroof or moonroof up top shark fin style antenna which is body color out rear the plastic cladding continues black 18 inch rims just like up front still wrapped in the Hankook Kinergy GT all season tires the only difference out rear as you mentioned is a smaller single piston brake caliper you get a push to open gas cap with easy fill throw regular fuel in for this naturally aspirated two liter so I'll take a step back. Hopefully you guys can pick up the side profile on this 2025 HRV. The side profile and the front end styling reminds me a lot of an Audi Q5. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. And the tail end of this SUV reminds me a lot of the new Acura MDX thanks to these very MDX style taillights, which are full LED, black taillight housing. We get a red runner, which is also LED in the center. We get a turn signal in the corner with the reverse light towards the center. More chrome for the HRV badge, but a blacked out sport. Shout out Ocean Honda in Port Richie, Florida for helping make this review possible. Chrome Honda badge, wiper right above it, black spoiler up top with an LED third brake light. We get an exhaust tip in the lower right corner. And speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder sold by Honda for the 2025 HRV. And definitely doesn't sound too crazy. Doesn't make the most power either at 158 horsepower, 138 pound feet of torque, weighing in around 3,159 pounds, made it to a CVT transmission. You can expect zero to 60 between nine and nine and a half seconds. So definitely not the quickest. What you see is basically what we get. My hand is burning right now holding up this hood. It's like 95 degrees right now in Port Ritchie, Florida. So we'll get that thing shut. Walk around this 2025 HRV one more time. And before we take a step inside, let's take a quick look at the window sticker here on this 2025 HRV two wheel drive sport. Hopefully you guys can pause, take a look at all of the standard features. There are quite a bit for $27,200, 1350 for the destination and handling charge totaling us out at 28,550 bucks. We're gonna average 28 MPGs, 26 in the city, and 32 on the highway. But taking a step inside, we get smart access for the driver and the front passenger. We'll turn these lights back to auto so the car's not yelling at me. But up top, we get soft touch materials, hard plastic in the center to be expected at this price point, but a gushy soft leather armrest with orange contrast stitching. We get auto one touch windows up front, they feel very accurate like with power windows out rear. No power folding mirrors, but they're four-way adjustable lock and unlock. The area where your knee will often hit is also leather stitched. We get one of our speakers. It sounds pretty good for a base system and solid storage 
you'll fit a six inch sub and a 24 ounce water bottle in front of it. No nameplate. The seats are fabric, but they're very comfortable. We have like this dual material for it with orange contrast stitching and solid bolstering for a cloth seat. They're not power seats, but you can still recline, drop lift and slide with latches and taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So from the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. So compared to the 2023 and 2024 HRV we reviewed in this channel, really not a whole lot has changed. It is supposed to change for 2026, but in the meantime, still the tried and true interior and power plant, Honda has been killing over the last few years when it comes to keeping the naturally aspirated reliability as opposed to a lot of the competition. We are seeing more CVTs, but only for the economy part of Honda's lineup. Anything with a six cylinder, or more powerful output engine you're seeing with a conventional or even sometimes a manual transmission. Either way, we get a leather wrapped steering wheel, orange contrast stitching, the horn area has a rubberized texture, horn itself, not very loud or aggressive, but should still do the job. We'll do a window check. We don't get dual panes, wouldn't be expected, but it's a pretty thick single pane of glass. Solid 10 and two bolstery notch, nine and three, fits perfect in your hand. We got our volume and skip controls on the left side, AM, FM, Sirius, adjustments for the left side infotainment and voice command. Speaking of the infotainment adjustments, we can check between range and fuel, speed and time, driver attention, seat belts, maintenance, safety support, no content, brightness, settings, age display settings, warnings, and right back where we started. That would be my personal favorite to look at all times, the range and fuel. And here we also get a slight trip computer with the mileage of your trip and average fuel economy in the center. We have our digital speed on the center, our drive mode beneath it, total mileage, gear we're currently in, and our fuel level. On the right side, we have an analog, also digital, but analog style speedometer, seatbelt information to the right of it. Overall, very crisp digital display. The dashboard is all soft touch material. That's also appreciated. On the right side of the steering wheel, we get our adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. The stocks have a very satisfying click. Auto headlamps, no auto high beams, and no auto rain sensing wipers. Neither would be expected at this price point. Tilt and telescoping steering column, traction control, the air vent has like a Civic style air vent to it and very premium feel. All leather stitching for the front part of this dashboard too, making this interior feel a lot more premium. Hopefully you get a good look at the pedals and our hood latch release in the corner. We get our seven inch touchscreen over here. It's a little bit of a dated style display, no navigation, but we still get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it's very functional. Audio, volume, list, menu, return, connect, media, radio, phone, and our skip controls. We check out menu, sound settings, Bluetooth settings, clock settings, everything's adjusted through the touch sensors. Interesting. And media, we don't have a device paired. We're not going to set anything up. Radio, it's going to probably start blasting the music if I don't turn it down phone connectivity and skip controls. And again, once you plug your phone in or connect your phone, you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is wireless. Beneath that, we get more of that leather stitching, air vents that have the honeycomb style running all throughout the front of this dashboard, very cockpit style with the hazards in the center, single zone automatic climate control. It's not dual zone, but the automatic climate is still appreciated. Heated front seats, defrosters underneath. No wireless phone charging pad, USB-A port, no USB-C port in the center. Two cup holders, you'll fit 24, possibly 32 ounce bottles. The gear selector controls the CVT transmission. Backup camera, let's check it out. Has okay resolution, guidance lines, and trajectory, which is appreciated, different views. We have a wider view and an over the top trailer hitch style view, and you can turn off the guidance lines and trajectory. Throw right back in a park, and we return right back to the previous screen. And the gear selector has a sport mode and a low gear. Speaking of that, we have drive modes too. Snow, Econ, and Normal Mode. We'll start the review off in Econ. Try out Normal Mode and try out the Sport Transmission Mode and see what the differences are. Hill Descent Control, Electron Parking Brake with Brake Hold. Soft leather armrest. We can check out the storage space. Impressive. You're fitting probably five, maybe six one liter bottles of soda in there. The glove box is damped. Not lying felt, but it's pretty large. You'll fit 25 maybe 30 license plates in there. I expect you to fit a pair of shoes, maybe a third shoe, probably won't fit two pairs of shoes because not the widest, but still very large for a subcompact crossover SUV. We don't get a frameless or auto dimming rear view mirror. You gotta pull this flappy thing to dim it. The interior lights are LED, awesome. And that's about it for the front seat of this 2025 
Honda HRV Sport. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there, as well as the overall quality of the material. So up top, out back, it's just hard plastic. Same with the center, all to be expected, but we get the leather wrapped armrest. Not the most padding though. A little bit of storage, you'll fit a big gulp, no problem. Possibly shove a six inch sub, but I would personally not do that. The rear seats are still that fabric trim with orange contrast stitching, that dual tier material with stiffer bolsters and softer bottom and back portion. The legroom looks really good for a subcompact SUV. A little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, I still have about four or five inches of knee room, headroom, about an inch, inch and a half. So if you're under six foot four, six foot five, You'll sit behind your seat settings in a 2025 HRV with no problem. And that says a lot because remember, this is a subcompact SUV. And although it's in the subcompact segment, it's way bigger than a first generation CRV. To be fair, the new generation CRV is about the same size as the first generation pilot. So that's just the direction of the segments. Everything is growing. Unfortunately, no air vents back here or charge ports, but we do get a little bit of storage. And there is some type of vent underneath the front seat, but just nothing that blows directly into your face. The interior lights back here are touch sensitive. That looks really fancy. Hopefully you picked it up on camera. No center cubby, unfortunately, but overall very comfortable back here. It's really hard to believe that this is a subcompact SUV considering the space. Speaking of space, let's check out the cargo space. See how much space is offered back there. And then take this 2025 HRV Sport out for a drive. So we don't get a power lift gate. Wouldn't be expected again for this price point, not too tough considering the hydraulic struts. And this is an impressive cargo space. I'll leave a link right here to show you exactly how much is back here. Definitely pushing the boundary of what's a subcompact and a compact SUV compared to SUVs like the Mazda, say CX-5. We check out the secret storage. We get a little bit of cubbies back here with our spare tire underneath. Hopefully you guys could pick that up on camera. You fold the second row seats down 60-40 split. I would expect you to fit up to a 65, maybe even a 70 inch TV back here for a subcompact, I've said it like 10 times, that is really impressive. But what you see is basically what we get before we close the trunk. The step in is about an inch or two above my knee. I'm about six feet tall. So if you have older or smaller pets, they shouldn't have a very tough time hopping back here. And although the roof slopes pretty decently, they shouldn't have the toughest time keeping themselves comfortable in this trunk space. We got a 12 volt back here, two 180 watt max, and LED cargo lighting in each corner. We can shut this lift gate right down, walk around this 2025 Honda HRV Sport one more time. It is a beautiful SUV with this red paint color with all the black contrast that we get on the Sport trim. And keeping a sub $30,000 base price, it is spacious, it looks great as you mentioned, and it gives us just about every feature you could possibly want or need. Performance wise, as you mentioned, not the best in the segment, but considering the price point, let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2025 Honda HRV sport let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got my first impressions just like the previous model years since the third generation hrv has come out the driving dynamics are probably the most premium per dollar on the road today it is quiet on the road the steering feels sharp and direct it handles the bumps fantastically it doesn't crash at all it tracks in a straight line and for the most part it really it does everything but go fast speaking of go fast we'll go about third throttle in eco mode i mean it gets up there you look down and you're at speed it's just it's just that it gets the speed it doesn't do it excitingly but it does get there in econ mode it also numbs the throttle if you want to get a little bit more oomph just leave it in normal mode or leave it in sport transmission mode but then you're going to actually start to compromise fuel economy more noticeably taking a step out here about half throttle and yeah you get to, you definitely get up there eventually the two liter four cylinder it's quiet not as noisy as some of the competition, like say from Subaru. We can lean into right here up the hill. Ooh. Up top, it's got a little bit of power once you cross about like 4,500 RPM. The brakes feel great 
In econ mode, the steering feels really good. We could throw it into normal mode, try out sport transmission mode. The revs immediately increase. The steering, it feels just about the same. Rides over the bumps fantastically. As soon as we get the chance, we could try out a real world turning radius test. The turning radius is sharp. We can try one out off the line on the gas sport mode. Yeah, definitely not blowing you away, but we're at speed. Steering feels good. Doesn't really change compared to econ mode, but it felt good in econ mode. It feels good in sport mode. The big difference in sport mode for the transmission is the revs, which makes the throttle feel a lot more responsive. It feels like every time you step in the gas, the engine is ready to go, making it feel more powerful, making it feel quicker. Will it change your acceleration time? Absolutely not. You can floor it in eco mode. You can floor it in sport mode. At least to what I consider, it does not change. If anything, eco mode will be quicker because in eco mode, it doesn't have the artificial gear ratios that we get in sport. Ooh, yeah, see? Throttle response is good in sport. Throwing getting quicker than we should. Handling is excellent on the gas. Woo it becomes a screamer up top. And in sport mode, it likes to hold those revs a little bit longer but we can take it out of the sport transmission mode we'll leave it in normal for the rest of this review normal mode at least for the drive mode the transmission is also i guess back in the normal d mode really quiet we can take a step out here open her up a little bit more normal mode Whew, you look down and you are beginning to move and as soon as you let out the throttle the CVT throws you into its highest ratio and just cruising along around 50 miles per hour really quiet I would argue to say that in the subcompact segment sub thirty thousand dollars this is the most quiet on the road today and I think it helps because we get a little bit more of a premium tire compared to some of the subcompact competition. Everything about this SUV is just top-notch premium for what it is, except for the performance, which if you live in the city, I'm sure you'll, you're fine with. If you don't go on the highway very frequently, I'm sure you're fine with it. Although this is fine on the highway. Once you get to speed, it really doesn't take a whole lot of throttle to keep this thing moving. It'll do a top speed of over, well over 110 miles per hour, about third throttle in normal mode, it feels surprisingly peppy in normal mode. I'd recommend leaving it in normal mode. You're still gonna get over 25, 26 MPGs combined. Yes, in econ mode, that's where you're gonna get your rated 28 combined MPGs. But for the more responsive and just overall, more premium feeling driving experience, I would definitely recommend just leaving it in normal mode. Overall, if you're looking for the most premium vehicle per dollar and you do not care about zero to 60, you're okay with doing zero to 60 in over eight seconds. You're okay with doing zero to 60 in over nine seconds. And you should be aware of that when buying this vehicle because yes, it is excellent overall. It's just not the best performer. But outside of the performance, it does everything, and I mean everything well. It's spacious. Probably the most spacious subcompact in the segment right now. It's the quietest subcompact in the segment right now. It feels the best put together right now, at least from what I've felt so far out on the road today, compared to at least its direct competition, not including the more premium or higher end manufacturers. If that's what you're looking for, guys, I would 100% recommend checking out the HRV. If you're okay with something a little bit more bare bones, I'd recommend just going with the regular LX. And if you're looking for something a little bit more premium than the Sport, for only an extra 2,000 bucks, you can go for the EXL. But either way, I would recommend checking out this HRV. And this Sport is a great way to go. And a big thanks to Joe at Ocean Honda in Port Ritchie, Florida for help make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck, in the Port Ritchie, Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Joe. And a huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. 
leave a comment let me know what you like let me know what you don't like leave a comment let me know if there's any specific cars suvs or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel and i'll definitely try getting those videos for you asap but other than that again thank you guys so much for watching and i hope all of you have a great day